Our top story, it's leaking the truth as the Pentagon knows it all over the news, opening up fresh debate and reviving questions we have been asking here on RT for a while. If the war is lost, why does the U.S. continue to push forward? And with the release of the WikiLeaks documents, what is the role of the mainstream media in war reporting and groundbreaking investigations? We're joined by radio talk show host and political commentator Alex Jones. He's coming to us live from Austin, Texas. Hey there, Alex. Now, let's start with the mainstream media. When the WikiLeaks, uh, when WikiLeaks released the dates and history of Bilderberg, the Bilderberg Group meetings, which was this powerful group of uh, military professionals and executives meeting in certain areas, the mainstream media didn't pay much attention to it. And for the most part, when this WikiLeaks document thing broke, they didn't pay much attention to Julian Assange. Now he's all over the mainstream media. So what exactly is going on here and why was the mainstream media discrediting WikiLeaks before? Well, that's a complex issue and thank you for having me. But a lot of things are happening here. I don't think the people at WikiLeaks themselves are bad individuals. I, I think they mean well. But clearly they're being used here. Uh, it's admitted that the New York Times went to Obama last week when they were given these documents and uh, asked the White House what they should do with them. And out of the 92,000 uh, plus documents that have been released, we notice they're cherry picking these. And, and most of these are battlefield reports. They're not really top secret. They're just secret. Uh, and it, uh, uh, intelligence agencies the world over use fake intelligence that they leak on purpose uh, to really push their propaganda. And we hear that, oh, Pakistan is funding al-Qaeda and the Taliban. Well, who funds Pakistani ISI? It's the U.S. government, the Mossad, and British intelligence. And then we hear that bin Laden is alive and is over there. So that keeps that myth uh, going. And so we're seeing a lot of the stuff that the media is focusing on in these documents uh, is really aiding the military-industrial complex in their goal of continuing this war. Much of what was in these documents we already know about the massacres, the mass killings, uh, the drone attacks, uh, and things like that. And this is the first time that WikiLeaks released this to the mainstream media. Der Spiegel, London Guardian, New York Times first, instead of releasing it to the general public. So the mainstream media was able uh, to, to put the spin you know, Alex, uh, on I, the information. I want to ask you about that, actually, because as you mentioned, you know, WikiLeaks had to release this information, not the mainstream media. Where we once depended on the media during the Vietnam War, that's not the case nowadays. And we have to look to um, organizations like WikiLeaks for not only information on the war in Afghanistan, but for the most part, things in involving corruption that happened here on the home front. So is this the new face of investigative journalism? Well, I think it is. And, you know, I've released uh, many secret government documents that were ignored. And then finally last year, we got the MIAC report where the federal government ad admitted that their main focus for homeland security is gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, uh, patriots, and that it's not you know, dealing with a supposed Muslim extremist in the Middle East or Central Asia. And so the media chooses what they're going to cover and what they're not going to cover. And I do think uh, this is the new face of investigative journalists, or at least one side of it. Uh, the problem is still the dominant corporate media is able to spin this information in, in any direction uh, that they wish. Uh, and, and also we hear the media now saying and the government saying this is why we need gatekeepers and cybersecurity surveilling everything so that information like this can be stopped before it's put out on the web. Uh, but uh, uh, we do see uh, WikiLeaks wanting to get mainstream media attention and so now they're going straight to the establishment uh, corporate press to do that and that's why uh, this is now such a big story. So it looks like even when they do trust the mainstream media they sort of spin the story in their own terms. So I want to ask you, you yourself Alex, I mean people follow Infowars incredibly. You have a huge viewership. Why are more Americans now turning to media like your own as well as the new media for information whereas they once only had the mainstream media and other outlets that they've lived by for, for decades. Well, uh, there's always been corruption. Every nation has corruption. Uh, but the difference is, do you fight the corruption or, or do you give into it? And the United States has been corrupt for a while. It's just now because of the Internet in the last 20 years, the people are more aware of it. And so the mainstream corporate media that really just repeats press releases that are given to them uh, by the government and Fortune 100 corporations, they've lost almost all credibility 
uh, and uh, it's not just a question of the internet competing with them. Even when you've got mainstream media outlets on the internet, they're being dwarfed by alternative media because the alternative media has a better track record of giving people uh, a larger perspective and more diversity uh, in news. There's an entire full spectrum of ideas uh, and debate that instead of dumbing uh, the news down is actually now uh, reinvigorating it and really forcing the mainstream media to act more like the alternative media. I mean, just to be pertinent now or to be in the game, Alex, uh, we see the New York Times and others now reporting on the WikiLeaks situation. Alex, I want to ask you now about the WikiLeaks documents in general. You know, a lot of, there have been lots of comparisons that this could be the that this is the Pentagon Papers. But where is the Pentagon Papers actually contributed to ending the war? You're now seeing that yes, the war is going bad; it's unwinnable. But we're going to keep fighting. In fact, we're going to vote for a 33 billion dollar increase to keep funding this war. So, what are we fighting this for? For this war for? If we know it's not winnable. Well, Vietnam was not meant to be winnable. It was meant to make hundreds of billions of dollars for weapons manufacturers and have a uh, military laboratory, the Pentagon talks about this, to train troops in hardcore combat to then come back and police the population domestically. And Iraq and Afghanistan are laboratories. Uh, they want the trillion dollars in lithium, the trillions of dollars in oil, the trillions of dollars in the aggregate on no bid contracts. Uh, it is really a place for the dark side of the government, the black ops secret government, uh, to uh, you know, ship out opium. Opium production is off the charts. Uh, now our government doesn't deny this. They admit our troops guard the opium and even help basically ship it out. And so uh, this is a key crossroads in the world to move U.S. forces in to also checkmate Russia and China. Uh, as well as Pakistan and India. So it's all part of a larger geopolitical uh, strategic development that Brzezina Brzezinski has talked about. And so the war is not really being lost uh, because the, the objective is not to bring democracy and freedom to Afghanistan. Uh, it is to have a war laboratory and a black hole to steal trillions of dollars of uh, money and, and opium and oil and lithium out of. This is a corporate war. Uh, the United States is dominated by offshore corporations. We are just the modern Hessian mercenaries for this global uh, corporate system. And so, whereas Daniel Ellsberg was at the Rand Corporation, and, and this was actual highest level war policy uh, showing that the war was uh, unwinnable, uh, this information is more battlefield communiques, and I think most of it is basically propaganda. They leak to WikiLeaks. Alex, I want to ask purpose. you really quickly now, because we're coming to an end now. So you're practically saying, or implying at least, that this is another case of typical war profiteering. If so, um, will we see these WikiLeaks stocks as a turning point where it was uh, during the Vietnam War? And if not, who here is benefiting from this war as it continues? Well, I mean, I do think it's going to have a similar effect uh, to what we saw with the uh, Ellsberg papers, uh, but I don't think it's overall going to be a turning point unless the American people get upset and demand the war ends. But both political parties, the Republican and Democrats, are bought and paid for by the military industrial complex that President Eisenhower warned us about. Uh, in January of 1961, they have taken this country over, and they they are now openly engaged in martial law drills publicly in the United States. And so the question isn't will we get out of Afghanistan? The question is will the United States fully fall to the military-industrial complex itself owned by foreign banks? Will we let these offshore banks maneuver the United States into a war with Iran and Syria, which is now being well, greenlighted? Alex, unfortunately, that's uh, all the time we have here. But what you were mentioning, we're going to follow in the newscast as it comes up. That was Alex Jones, Radio Talks Joe host, joining us from Austin, Texas. Thank you.